The Bristol Board of Education. Maintaining a safe and secure learning environment for all students. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our July 10th, 2019 Board of Education meeting. Before we move to the pledge, I wanted to depart from our usual uh, plan and just introduce some people at the table tonight because we have some new players. Many of you know that we hired Dr. Carbone to be our new superintendent, so she's moved from my right to my left to uh, assume the superintendency, and we're excited to have her leading uh, the team. And then we also have to my right Dr. Dieter, who moved from the special ed director's chair to the deputy superintendent's chair, and so we, he's up at the table with us this evening. And you will notice that uh, Commissioner Taylor is not here. I received information yesterday of her intent to resign, and uh, we want to thank her for her services. Over the past three and three quarter years, she's uh, given us uh, her, her hard work in the policy committee, and student achievement and operations, and she provided a great perspective as a mother and as an educator. So we thank her for her services. I know she's probably watching on TV. So we want to give some plaudits and some shout out to her and thank her. And then we'd also like to welcome our new commissioner who was uh, uh, sworn in at noon time today. And he's here already, uh, Morris Rippy Patton. Uh, he comes to us with quite a bit of community experience. He's involved in his church, he's involved in some nonprofit organizations, um, he's involved in, uh, also has been a Zoning Board of Appeals member, I, I think, so we're glad to have your experience on the board and hope uh, we can all get up to speed and have a nice successful uh, tenure. Thank you. So now we will move to the pledge. We don't have any special music today because the kids were off, so we're just going to be doing the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. When I was making those opening comments, I was remiss to mention that Scott Rosado uh, is at the table also, and he is filling in for Peter Kelly this evening as the liaison from the City Council. Yes. So we welcome you again. Thank Glad you. to have you. Thank you. We now move to a moment of silence for three staff employees. Chester Kozakowski, who was a Bristol Central High School custodian from November of 67 to May of 1991. Ann Norton, who was a Bristol Central High School English teacher from September, September of 69 to June of 2003. And Florette Shingler, who was a Bristol Eastern High School foreign language from September 52 to June of 1991. Please provide a moment of silence with me. right on to the minutes. You received the minutes in the packet and then there was a, a change I believe yesterday uh, with some clarification on some grammar and some other things. So uh, I would entertain a motion now to approve the minutes as revised. Move to accept. Second. Yeah, motion has been properly made and seconded by Christian G. Antonio. Uh, any comments or further corrections? If not, I think you're ready to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Abstain. And abstentions. Thank you. We'll now move on to committee reports. The uh, first committee up would be Student Achievement. Commissioner Doobie. Awesome. Thank you. So the Student Achievement Committee met on Wednesday, June 19th, and we had a short agenda. We discussed the high school courses updated science curriculum and we also had a discussion on the community service requirement for our graduating students. 
questions? If not, we'll move right forward to Finance Commissioner Goodwin. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. The Finance Committee did not meet last month, but as we we're nearing the end of the fiscal year, I thought it would be important and prudent for us to get an update from Mrs. Brown. Um, we had initially projected to the city that we would come in somewhere between, I think, 800000 and $1.2 million over. It's always due to special ed and, and sometimes food services. So Jill is going to be gracious enough to give us um, a detailed update, and I'm going to pass this around, which you probably would have received at the So check, look at the date of this, because this goes back to June. While she's waiting and that's going, even though nobody likes a deficit, um, we always have a, a pretty substantial deficit in special services, and that's not good, but the good thing is we're servicing the students and we need the service. Same with food services. We often have a deficit in food services, which we don't like, but we're feeding the kids. And we are not alone. Most districts in our dirt are facing the same issues. So, good evening. Uh, this evening's report is uh, the report as of the end of May. So this is the May 31st report. We're currently still analyzing the end of June. And as you know and are familiar with, the year end uh, continues on throughout the months of July and August as we're still expecting our uh, closing invoices and uh, the last receipts of various sources of revenue. So as of the end of May, we were in receipt of $4,200,998 in revenues from uh, rentals, tuitions, Medicaid, and displaced student relief grant sources. Um, that also includes the special education excess cost grant funding. All of those have been applied to the current snapshot that you received uh, via email prior to uh, the cancellation of the finance meeting. Uh, currently, as of May 31st, we had an operating budget of negative $1.458 million. We are continuing to receive revenues from various sources, and we are continuing to close purchase orders, and we do not expect that that's going to be our final number. We are going to improve on that number. Uh, as we had reported throughout the year, the areas in which we are over budget are transportation, uh, magnet tuition, special education, and regular education transportation. Uh, we went over budget just slightly in operation of plant, um, but again, we're still closing invoices and those numbers are not final. We do continue to forecast that we still have approximately $1.3 in the teacher salary line available for transfer. We will utilize that to mitigate the special education deficit. At the time that I had done these reports, we still had about 800 purchase orders open. We have improved on that. Today I ran the report again. We have 279 purchase orders open. Uh, remaining on those purchase orders are $776,000 that have been encumbered. Not all of those monies will be spent. Let me just give you a quick for instance. If we have a purchase order open for $5,000 and the final invoice is $3,000, the remaining $2,000 comes back into the general fund and helps us mitigate the deficit. So I can run the report and see where all of those uh, encumbrances are and make my best guess as to what those final invoices will be. And I do believe we will still fall between our $800,000 and $1.2 million deficit, closer to the $800,000, which is good for the city. We will have a better idea as July comes to an end. Um, any questions so far? Okay. Um, no big news in appropriations and transfers. Uh, next comes the cafeteria report. The cafeteria snapshot was taken one day prior to the end of school. Unfortunately, we now have a significant deficit showing of $92,844. Of that current deficit, $21,673 can be attributed to the six sent uh, reduction in our reimbursement, and that was due to the administrative review. We suffered that for the months of uh, February, March, April, and May. It was reinstated for June 1st. 
The reason for this change is we had an increase in purchase order for uh, food supplies and paper products to get us through the year. And that increase in the purchase order didn't happen until late April. So it made it onto this report and I know that that's a big change. So we did take a look at what can we do moving forward. Um, we realized that there were several uh, items that had not gone out to bid for several years. Um, our milk vendor, our paper supply vendor, our, our, some of our food vendors, and so those things have gone out to bid and we will uh, do better in many of those areas moving forward next year. Um, also, we are reapplying to the CEP program with our most updated identified student percentage numbers, those ISP numbers, which gives us a larger rate of reimbursement. So those are two positive things moving forward. I do need to talk about uh, the triennial administrative review that happened. Um, as you know, the uh, administrative review took place in the month of January. They were here with a visiting team from January 15th through 17th. And we received a closeout letter um, from the State Department dated June 12th, and that letter is in the packet that um, Mrs. Vibert handed out. Um, the Connecticut State Department of Ed is in receipt of the district's corrective action plan and response to all the results and findings during the review. And they've determined that all the areas of corrective action that, were, that we put forth were addressed and approved. So that's good news. However, the errors that they identified, uh, they determined require fiscal action and they pertain to meal counting and claiming, meal components and qualities, or quantities rather. I think Dr. Moreau had shared with you that we were short a couple of cups or a quarter cup of vegetable once per week. That's the quantity that they're referring to. That resulted in fiscal action charges um, in the amount of $106,468.28. The letter states that this amount will be recovered from a future monthly claim. However, when I went into the website earlier this month, I can see that on that date, June 12th, there were several adjustments made for the months of September 2018 through February 2019. And all of those adjustments in each of those months totaled at 106468.28. That means that that $92,000 deficit is going to grow. The CSD, uh, C Connecticut State Department of Education is required to report the final results of the administrative review. Uh, therefore, a summary of the review will be posted on their website until another triennial, triennial review is conducted. You also have that summary in your packet. We had asked them uh, via email for a breakdown or a calculation of how they came up with that number because we're unable to recreate it and we did not hear back from them. So in a letter dated June 28th, we filed a formal request for review or an appeal to the final results. Uh, we thanked them for accepting our corrective, our corrective action and proving that. However, uh, we don't feel that the charges are an appropriate amount uh, reflective of the results and findings of the administrative review. Just today, we received a letter dated July 10th. You will also have a copy of this letter informing us that the Division of Legal and Government Affairs has appointed a review official to conduct the appeal proceedings that we requested. We now need to uh, submit documentation of our position within 30 days. We've already been working on our documentation. Once we submit that from 60 days of the date of that submission, they will inform us of their determination and we will then report out to you. I'm hopeful that there will be some change in that astronomical number and I will stay positive. Do you have any questions for me? Would the people who were directly responsible for these deficiencies uh, discipline? Yes. 
uh, the individual that was responsible for production records at one of the schools was dismissed from that position and relocated to a different position, a general position within the cafeteria, and I believe she's no longer part of that bargaining unit. number is so high so I if I heard you correctly a quarter cup of vegetable per week shortage was what we were docked for our food portion control but what is the meal counting and claiming portion where where did we fail in, in specifics in that regard I would have to go back and check the records on that I don't want to give you an incorrect answer okay. um, each month when we submit for a claim, we have to count the number of meals served in every school and every type of meal. I'm not sure if there was an error in that. And like I said, I don't want to give you an incorrect answer, but I will get back to you with that answer. Was it part of, um, at one point we discussed that when the free milk was given out without um, the corresponding portions of food? It's possible that that is what they're referring to. Thank you very much, Jill, for Thank you. this report. I know that it's uh, frustrating what's happening, but we do appreciate your efforts. You're welcome. Thank you. Now I'll move on to my report, and I did want to highlight what I call a graduation wrap-up. Um, all of us probably saw the news media, and if we attended the graduations of our two high schools, but there's two other programs that we have graduations at that are really impactful programs, and I, I thought I'd give them a little attention. The first one is uh, Bristol Prep Academy, and that is a, a Kennedy, I like to call it like an alternative high school, where students who can't find success in the high school for a number of reasons um, have an opportunity to engage much more intensely with staff and reach their goals and reach graduation. And we graduated 18 students, uh, from our uh, program this year. And three of them gave graduation testimonies, if you will, and as much of a, I think I'm a man's man, it brings your heart to, uh, to melt when you hear the struggles and the obstacles these students had to overcome and how impactful the teachers and the directors in Larry Covino's program there. Not only was the staff in tears, but I think some of us in the audience were as well. And then the second program I'd like to highlight is under uh, Mr. Covino's program is the Bristol Adult Ed uh, Credit Diploma. It was a national external program, and then most of you are probably very familiar with the GED program. And again, there was 18 students who graduated through those means. And these are students that have tried to graduate many times, some of them three and four times, and life got in the way. But the people down at the adult ed stick with them, they nurture them, they really get with them, and they try to motivate them, and they get them through the program. Um, and again, we went to that graduation, and uh, Commissioner Hintz was with me at that one, and, I know Commissioner Vibbert's been there in the past years. It's probably one I've made every year that I can, and it's it's just really uh, heartwarming to see the students succeed, and uh, that that our school system is a addressing that unmet need and, and helping those students be successful in life. Some of them receive scholarships from our Liberty Bank, and some of them already have. Uh, acceptance into some community colleges and other post-education uh, programs. So we're really fortunate to have that program in our district, and it's really making a contribution to those students' lives. The next item I'd like to talk about is the Bissell Education Foundation. As you all know, that's a foundation that we use primarily to fund the many grants that we do every year. Um, the premier fundraiser is going to be occurring in October on the 18th. So I have uh, some flyers up here, but if uh, 
you need how to register, how to get involved, to put together a team for the trivia night. We're doing the trivia night again, and it's uh, our pinnacle fundraising event, and we really need your support so that we can provide the funds and the proceeds um, to uh, sustain the mini grants. And the mini grants for those who are listening at home are like innovative monies that we can provide to our teachers to provide things that we can't fund in the Board of Education budget. And uh, they're little extras, if you will. They're not really extras, but little things. And we, they, it almost becomes like a feeding ground for us at the Board of Education. They get tested by a classroom or two, and, s and we can see if something works. It's like an incubator. And then if it does work, then we can put it into our, our regular budget if we have the resources to do that. So I really encourage you to uh, get involved and support that event um, in October. You'll hear more from me in, in August and September probably with another commercial, but I hope, I hope you can do it. And the next item I'd like to speak about is the legislative update. Um, you know, I, I think I sent you all a packet of the summary, so I won't go over the whole summary for you, but I just did want to highlight a couple things. Um, this year was the long session uh, at the legislature, so any legislator can put out a bill as well as, as, well as bills coming out of committee. So this year we had over 3,500 bills that came through. So the packet you saw that I sent to you and the link that uh, gave the summary of the, the, this year's legislation, uh, you know, it was, a, it was a summary of that activity. Fortunately, uh, not all 3,500 initiatives became law, and so we ended up with what we ended up with. Um, a couple of the highlights that I uh, would, would like to talk about, but before I do that, s some people wonder what our legislative activity did or didn't do, and is it successful? Well, as many know, the governor wanted to pass on uh, teacher pension to local municipalities. And in Bristol, that, that cost was estimated anywhere between 7,500, $75 million or $200 million in costs. And we know if that got passed on to the local community, um, that would be a significant blow to education. So I think our legislative efforts worked in that regard. And then uh, one of the other things that came out of that was um, well, I'll move on from that. One of the bills that came out that I thought was positive was the, if we have a surplus in any given year, and we haven't had a surplus in a number of years, but if we do, now with the fiscal authority, which is the Board of Finance, we can set aside, instead of 1%, uh, 2%. Um, so we're hopeful that with the new leadership of our new superintendent, we're going to start getting into the, the black again, and uh, we will start having some set-aside money. One of the other pieces of legislation that uh, passed this year was the inclusion of African American and Latino studies. And uh, boards must begin offering the courses in 2022 and 2023. And the state has been charged with um, making those course curriculum available uh, to us. Another uh, issue that uh, is, has a lot of discussion floating around the Capitol is allowing the Board of Ed to add an additional 20 minutes of undirected playtime for our elementary age students. Uh, but with that comes, you know, classroom time, so it's always a push-pull. Uh, but uh, we now are allowed to do that if we choose to. And we also now are allowed to uh, let students six and above to possess and apply uh, sunscreen. And when I first saw this, I said I was really surprised at it. But it turns out there's 20 other states that have passed this uh, legislation, so Connecticut was not alone. Um, before, it was considered an over-the-counter medication, and the student couldn't possess it. So now if they're going out to recess or on a field trip or whatnot, they can't apply. They can't have and apply uh, the sunscreen on their own. And, and finally, uh, I would just do want to highlight that the state uh, set a goal to hire for education community to hire 250 new minority teachers. Um, and we're going to achieve that with many methods, including uh, greater reciprocity amongst other states. Connecticut has some of the hardest uh, standards to get in uh, 
the education community, so we're hopeful that with reciprocity with those other states, we can get more um, minority candidates as well as uh, additional flexibility of certification. Um, if you had had a certification and it lapsed, instead of having to go back to school and redo your academic work, you can have it reinstated. Uh, mortgage assistance uh, for teachers uh, who are primarily serving uh, minority students and a couple of other things. And the last item on my agenda is one I'd like to turn over to Dr. Dieter, who will talk about the Memorial Boulevard Interdistrict Magnet School. Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, Memorial Boulevard Interdistrict Arts Magnet School update uh, is fairly brief this evening. Uh, we have met. Uh, we, uh, the report is that we continue to be uh, moving forward at a pace that um, is keeping us on time with, uh, with anticipated uh, construction and the work that needs to be done there. Uh, the current work has focused on interior and exterior design features. Uh, in the interior, uh, we've been working hard to assure that we have a uh, gymnasium uh, that is accessible to the entire community and will allow us to, um, the community to utilize that space um, for uh, multiple reasons uh, as well as have uh, areas for um, uh, Part, both for participants and uh, folks to observe what's going on. Uh, there's a lot of restriction uh, with regard to safe runouts and ceiling heights and those types of things. So uh, we've been working to uh, alleviate and clarify those issues. Uh, and those issues are primarily, uh, the impact has been primarily with maintaining the historical features on the exterior of the building um, and, uh, and ensuring that any additions that are made maintain those important uh, historic and architectural features. Uh, so that work uh, has now engaged uh, folks back at the Office of School Grants and Construction Review, uh, as well as uh, the State Historic Preservation Office. Um, and we are awaiting an update, uh, which will happen tomorrow evening, because that's when the next uh, building committee meeting is scheduled to happen, 6.30 in room 36. All are welcome to attend. Uh, and, and then lastly, I would just wanna report uh, regarding the project that we've expanded our channels of communication uh, with our neighbors at Associated Spring uh, so that uh, we have a regularly scheduled phone conference with them to update them on any impact that vehicles uh, uh, entering or uh, exiting, accessing our site uh, as we begin to ramp up. Uh, we want to be assured, uh, we want to assure them that any impact will be minimal and that there'll be plenty of time to plan uh, as the primary uh, entrance in egress um, is just adjacent to their uh, shipping and receiving area. Uh, if you have any specific questions, I'd be happy to answer them for you. Okay, thank you. Good evening, uh, Chairman Wilson, Commissioners, Councilman Rosado, and community members. First, um, I would be remiss if I didn't um, uh, express my appreciation um, and how honored I am to serve as a superintendent of the Bristol Public Schools. During my six years as the principal at Chippens Hill Middle School and the past 16 months serving as the assistant superintendent, I've had the opportunity to work with dedicated administrators and staff, dynamic and caring parents, and our talented scholars. Bristol Public School has a great deal to be proud of. My team and I are committed to working collaboratively with our families, staff, and city officials to ensure our Bristol Public Schools offers innovative academic programs and inclusive school communities to ensure every student in our district has access to the quality education they need and deserve. During late summer and early fall, Dr. Diener and I will meet with parents, teachers, students, and community leaders to introduce ourselves and seek feedback to inform our work. The suggestions gained from these community conversations will be shared through our monthly Bristol Board of Education meetings. I am, continued, I am committed to continue and further the district's goals of continuous improvement, equity, and rigorous instruction to ensure all of our students are positioned for success. 
I look forward to working collaboratively with the board to make these commitments a reality for our families and students. My report this evening highlights the professional learning um, held during the last weeks of June in the upcoming work of the Board of Education. On Wednesday, July 17th, the Bristol Board of Education will participate in a Board of Education retreat from 5.45 to 8.45 at the Bristol Boys and Girls Club. The focus of the retreat is to develop our roles, expectations, and structures for a highly effective board and superintendent governance and leadership team. Two articles have been provided for you in your packet, one entitled School Governance Position Statement and the second, Eight Characteristics of Effective School Boards. These readings will be used during our retreat. On June 17th, the first day of summer vacation for students, our administrators engage in professional learning to review end of the year academic and culture climate goals and assess school level climate and culture attributes using our new Bristol Public Schools climate navigational tool. These attributes outlined in the tool highlight behavioral expectations, programming, interventions, and social emotional learning that will be implemented during the 2019-2020 school year. On June 18th, 19th, and 20th, over 100 staff and administrators participated in our district-wide launch of our climate and culture plan and the use of the navigational tool. The three days of training were filled with fun, new learning, and collaboration between and among our school teams. The positive energy and school level strategies and programming created by each team are an exciting starting point for our next year. And lastly, um, next week, July 16th and 17th, the Bristol Association of Principals and Supervisors will engage in two days of professional learning facilitated by members of the central office team and our OTL supervisors, focusing on leading for equity, leading with coherence for continual improvement, and leading for rigorous instruction. Thank you. Consent agenda. Does anybody wish to pull anything out of the consent agenda? Just have a comment that the resumes of the new hires are not included as attachments as they normally are. And I think that was an error, but would like to see those in the future. Okay. Does anybody wish to pull anything out of the consent agenda? If not, I believe you're ready to vote. You're voting on items 7 1 through 7, uh, 6 1 through 6 2. I would entertain such a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. It's been made, motion has been made by Commissioner O'Brien, seconded by Commissioner Bibber. Any questions or comments? If not, you ready to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We are now down to public comment. Do we have anybody who wishes to comment? We'll move to number eight, deliberated items. Um, first up is a report on dress down days. Uh, this year, through uh, the efforts of our Bristol Public School uh, employees, we have raised $23,804.25. Monies that we collect during our monthly dress down days are reallocated to local charities. Each year the charities um, change to ensure that we support Bristol Public School, uh, the Bristol community at large. We'll now go to 8.2 summer programs. I think Mrs. Fortin is going to say something about that. Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, it's my privilege tonight to give you an update on our summer enrichment program. You recall that uh, a couple of months ago, I came in to present the course offerings, and we have 27 classes that we're offering for our elementary through middle age uh, grade students. Right now, according to Mr. Redman, who's running the program, we have 118 children enrolled in these classes. The classes are provided by many of our Bristol educators. Uh, some of the most exciting offerings I hear from Mr. Redman are, um, let's see, Master Chef Baking, 
uh, where students learn to safely measure and use fractions in a fun-filled class while they are making lots of baked goods to bring home. And Legoland is the second most popular class where students are using Lego education construction sets uh, with easy to use programming. So they're beginning the, the first stages of building out robotics. So we, ha we run uh, two sessions per day and we run five weeks of classes. The program information is available on our Bristol Board of Education webpage and they accept registrations throughout the summer. I was also going to give an update on the enrollment for our um, high school secondary summer school program. However, that registration just closed early this morning and we don't yet have our um, class enrollments set yet. The staff couldn't put that together quickly enough for me to get that for tonight's presentation since their registration just closed at 12 o'clock. But that summer school program will begin uh, next week and will run through August 6th. Dr. Dieter wanted to report also on our additional summer program. Before you leave, before you leave, I just have a question sure. on, the, on the summer enrichment program. I noticed that the scheduling um, over the past few years for summer enrichment um, coincides exactly with the dates and times of extended school year students. And so those students don't have opportunities to attend summer enrichment. And so I'd like to be able to maybe make sure one of our subcommittee meetings discuss mm -hmm. that. That's a great suggestion. And that's actually what Dr. Dieter is going to talk about, that extended school year program. So we'll work together on finding a solution to that. Thank you. Good evening again. Uh, I'm going to just give you a brief summary of our current enrollment in extended school year program. Uh, we have an extended school year program. Uh, summer school is traditionally what it's referred to. Uh, the difference here is that this program uh, that's run out of Green Hill School uh, is for students who are all uh, eligible for special ed services and these services are necessary uh, to prevent regression of skills over the summer. Uh, we currently have 285 students enrolled in our summer program receiving specialized instruction as well as related services uh, and uh, that program is running uh, two and a half hours uh, four days a week and began end of June and will commence uh, end of July uh, with regard to pre-k students we have 32 students uh, this year that are participating uh, in a uh, intensive tier 2 intervention uh, pre-K students who are transitioning to kindergarten. Uh, we did some assessment and determined uh, a cohort of students that if we felt if we gave an intensive um, support to, it's likely that we could transition them uh, to kindergarten uh, with, uh, uh, with less need for intensive services. So uh, we're getting those students uh, ready to go uh, for start of kindergarten. With regard to summer enrichment, I think one, uh, while well, I think that's a, a great idea to look at uh, the schedule, um, I do know that uh, summer enrichment has an afternoon session. Um, and I think the key difference between summer enrichment and extended school year is extended school year would be a mandated service and summer enrichment uh, would be uh, something that a family would access at their, um, as a choice, uh, but I, we certainly will work with them to look at how, how we could coordinate. Should also have the same opportunity of that choice, and currently mm -hmm. they don't if they're mandated for ESY. Okay. Any other questions? No? Thank you. Our next one is. Uh, consideration of approval to address the Healthy Foods Act requirements. I guess we did this last month, but we're going to redo it with some uh, background. We did this last month, but we did not do the beverage exemption. And so that's what this one is. The Connecticut General Statute Section 10-221-Q requires the board to vote on the following beverage exemptions. The Bristol Board of Education will allow the sale to students of beverages not listed in Section 10-221Q of the Connecticut General Statutes, provided that the following conditions are met. There are three. One, the sale is in connection with an event occurring at the end of the regular school day or on the weekend. Two, the sale is at a location of the event. And three, the beverages are not sold from a vending machine or school store. Uh, 
The event is an occurrence that involves more than just a regularly scheduled practice, meeting, or extracurricular activity. The school day is the period from midnight before to 30 minutes after the end of the official school day. And the location means where the event is being held and must be the same place as the beverage sale. Um, so beverages that might be sold during an extracurricular activity like a sporting event or a game or a, or a group that meets after school, a fundraiser group or an extracurricular group like student council or those types of things. Any other questions? So we need to have that recommended motion read? I can read the motion for you. Okay. The Bristol Board of Education will allow the sale to students of beverages not listed in Section 10-221Q of the Connecticut General Statutes, provided that the following conditions are met. Is it okay just to say the aforementioned conditions, or would you like me to read them again? Because they're word for word. Uh, I think we're okay. Okay. Hearing them once. I don't think we need to read it again. Okay. You think we, I'm sorry, you said no, right? Okay, so the recommendation would be to approve the motion as read. So moved. Second. Motion's been made and properly seconded. Any questions or comments? I have some questions. Um, I know that we voted on the food portion in policy committee, but why isn't this portion being sent back to policy committee to be reviewed? So we actually voted on them at the last full board meeting and just this beverage exemption should have been included at that time but was omitted. It was at the June 5th meeting because we had to upload the minutes from that meeting and that's when it was pointed out to us that we had omitted this beverage exemption portion. And so once we have the minutes for this meeting, we'll have to upload that and then Healthy Foods will approve us. Okay, thank you. It was our mistake that it wasn't included last month. It should have been. Our apologies for that. Any other questions? If not, I think we're ready to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Okay, now move on to curriculum revision. And we have the science curriculum. And I see Mrs. Fortin up, so I guess she's yes. here. Yes, I am. Dr. Reckenberg is on her summer vacation this week. Uh, in our, at our June 19th uh, Student Achievement Committee, Dr. Reckenberg presented uh, curriculum presentations for physical science, biology, and chemistry to the uh, committee. She went over and engaged our commissioners in some active learning about Yellowstone at, the mo at that meeting. Uh, of, so of course, our curriculum expands beyond, far beyond that. And she gave us an overview of the learning sequences and units of instruction for those three courses. The Student Achievement Committee voted to move that curriculum for your review and approval this evening. So with that, we're asking for a motion to approve the grade 9, 10, 11 science curriculum for the academic and accelerated level for physical science, biology, and chemistry. So moved. Second. You guys going to fight over it. Okay. <laughs> motion has been made and seconded by, made by Commissioner Dubin and seconded by Commissioner G. Antonio. Are there any questions or comments on the motion? If not, I think you're ready to vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? and abstentions. Okay, motion passed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Move on to new business. Does anybody have any new business? If not, we'll move on to information. Does anybody have any information? If not, we'll move on to liaison reports. Is there any liaison reports? If not, Just a we'll... quick one. What? Just a quick one. Quick. Yes. Um, I'm one of my liaison schools is Bristol Eastern. Hi, Mr. O'Brien. Um, and I've had the honor and pleasure of um, handing out diplomas at their high school graduation. It's probably one of the best things about being on the Board of Education. Um, and I just want to commend the people at Eastern. They have a wonderful policy that city officials and Board of Education members, past or present, are allowed to hand out the diploma to their child or grandchild or you know a relative like that and it's a wonderful wonderful thing for instance Dave Mills 
at Bristol Eastern gave his granddaughter her diploma. The mayor gave her son his diploma. I've given both of my children their diplomas, and it's just a great heartwarming thing. So kudos to the people at Eastern. That was quick. Thank you. Anybody the chairman else? had already reported on graduation, but... <laughs> I was on vacation. <laughs> Scott, did you have anything you wanted to share with us from the City Council? No? Okay. Um, I will entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. It's been moved. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned.